All right, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we are now going to be talking about two upcoming potential tropical cyclones. Now, the funny thing here is I was talking a bunch of trash about that potential tropical cyclone offshore of the East Coast. I was saying, oh, the European model, it's been showing this for days, not gonna happen. The National Hurricane Center hasn't been showing anything. Well, over the past 24 hours, I have certainly been proven wrong on that one. I'll be the first to admit that. Before we get started for today's comment of the day, I want to know, do you think that both of these systems will end up developing? Do you think one will end up developing? Let me know which if that is the case, or do you think none will end up developing? Let me know why in the comments down below, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Let's get straight into this video. And this one in the Gulf, we're just going to call it cyclone number one. Just to be simple, this one has been a threat for longer, so we're going to call this number one. You can see it is hugging the coast of Mexico, and before it can really develop, it's going to need to get over open water without that land bordering it. So I don't expect development to occur until it can move away from Mexico. Uh, now here is cyclone number two, and this one is offshore of North Carolina at this point, and you can see this one actually does look quite organized. Uh, would not be surprised to see this one develop a lot sooner potentially today or tomorrow, if not the next day, would be the most likely time frame for this one to develop. Super interesting seeing this one just jump onto the scene uh, very, very last minute. Now, for, for the two-day graphical tropical weather outlook, we see that this one has a 20% chance of development here in the southern Gulf over the next two days. Like I said, development is unlikely over the coming days for that one. However, with our one offshore of North Carolina, we have a 50% chance of development without, within the next two days. And actually, the next two days, I think, is the most likely development period. After that point, it actually becomes more unlikely. So that is what we're taking a look at over the next two days. Let's take a look at the five-day outlooks for both of these. Our Southern Gulf one, we have a 50% chance of development, uh, which is an upgrade. And then same story for our East Coast one. Uh, but again, I think the next two to three days is the most likely time frame for this one to develop. Afterwards, that percent chance is going to continue to go down, actually, uh, as it kind of heads more northward towards more unfavorable uh, conditions, especially the water temperatures are going to be trouble for this one. So if it's going to develop, it actually needs to do it very, very shortly, I would say, uh, in order for this one to be able to actually pick up some steam in those warmer waters down there offshore of North Carolina, Virginia, where we've actually seen some significant warming over the past couple of weeks. These waters are actually pretty, pretty warm right now. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on, and we're going to talk about the percent, uh, the probability of tropical depression by percent chance from the European model uh, for both of these systems and the probability of tropical storm as well. Uh, for both of these as well on the European model. All right, now starting out with tropical cyclone number one here, or, or Invest 92L is actually the official name of this one. We see that there is a 90 to 100% chance that this one will develop into a tropical depression over the next three days, according to the European model. I think the later in that time period you go, the more likely it is. So let's say day three, uh, which will end up being Thursday. I think that is the most likely day, uh, just because it'll be further and further away from Mexico by that point. That is my theory there. I think it will take a while for this one to pick up steam, like I said. Uh, but as you can see, probability of tropical storm, and this is going to be for days 4 through 7 or 18th through 21st of June, uh, this one does have a 20 to 30% chance of reaching Texas in Louisiana or one or the other. Uh, we have a 20 to 30% chance of tropical storm status for those areas according to the European model. Uh, so this model does think there is a solid chance this one does become a tropical storm. Now for tropical well, it's Invest 93L, or, or what we're calling Tropical Cyclone number 2. Uh, over the next three days, there is a 90 to 100% chance of tropical development uh, into a tropical depression over the next three days, just like that first system. So they both have a 90 to 100% chance of reaching tropical depression status. Tropical storm status for this one is a 50 to 60% chance, as you can see. So a bit higher, uh, quite a chunk higher, actually, than that first tropical system. Uh, for now, at least. I, I do think that that will likely maintain and then probably end up being the case. Uh, but for now, that'll certainly be how things line up, likely. Now, 
Let's take a look at the spaghetti model guidance here. First off, for our uh, 92L, the Gulf system, and as you can see, this is our GFS ensemble model. This one does uh, start to show a couple members taking this one northward towards Texas. There are some big updates once we take a look at the Canadian ensemble model here for this one. You can see multiple members taking this one towards uh, Texas, actually, which is obviously a concerning look. And then, as we can see, once we reach all the individual models, we do have a good amount of storms now, probably four or five uh, models here taking this towards Texas and Louisiana, which is especially concerning, obviously, seeing it take this towards the U.S. Gulf Coast. There's more and more models jumping on board with this solution. If it heads south towards Mexico, it will just kind of dissipate. I don't think it's going to, you know, go through Mexico and end up surviving. That will be the death of the system. However, if it heads northward, it's going to have a good amount of time to develop, and I think it could develop to a very strong storm. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to move on, and we're going to take a look at the intensity guidance for this system, where we can see the individual models on a chart showing us will it be a tropical storm, will it be a Category 1 system. And then we're going to move on to Invest 93L, the system offshore of North Carolina, take a look at the spaghetti model guidance for that one and the intensity guidance as well. All right, now here we are taking a look here at Invest 92L's uh, intensity guidance. And as you can see, uh, we're going to pretty much take a while to increase in intensity. But by the time we're reaching our 72, a lot of these models have this one at a tropical storm status. Actually, most of the models do. And then by hours 132, uh, about half of those, or two of those at least, have this as a Category 1 system, if not a strong tropical storm so look, this is an interesting, interesting storm, guys. And all of these models, I'm sure, have it heading up towards the Gulf, uh, into the middle of the Gulf. And that would be very bad to see it become a tropical storm or a Category 1, obviously. This is very early in the season for something like that, but is certainly possible. A concerning look there, certainly. Now, by time we are moving on and taking a look at Invest 93L here from the GEFS, you can see it's a very consistent outlook here. Uh, they all kind of have it tightly heading in one direction. This is what a spaghetti model chart should look like. Remember yesterday I said that octopus look or whatever I said it was. It looks like spaghetti was just thrown onto a plate uh, because it was just going everywhere. This, this right here is how a spaghetti model chart should look, and it looks like uncooked spaghetti. That's, that's what you're looking for because it's all heading in one direction. Uh, we get a good idea of what this is showing. If it looks like the spaghetti is fully cooked, not even al dente, just way overcooked. You, you don't want that. That's, that's decreasing my confidence whenever we see the spaghetti models all over the place. This is something I can be confident in when it looks like uncooked noodles here. Now let's move on to the Canadian model. And you can see it's like the same thing. Uncooked noodles here, looking good. I can feel confident that it is heading directly in that direction because all of them are showing the same thing, even the GFS ensemble model and the Canadian ensemble model. We're going to want to look out there uh, for the Atlantic coast of uh, Canada, obviously. And then even once we take a look here at the individual models, it's clear that they all have the same opinion here, uh, which is good news because at least we have an idea here, a, a very, very solid idea of what to expect uh, with this storm. Now, the intensity guidance is interesting here because we're going to be sharply heading towards tropical storm status according to every single one of these. Even this looks like uncooked spaghetti. I mean, really. But we, we see a weaker tropical storm being the most likely outcome for this one. And according to these models, it is guaranteed because there's not even a single model not showing it. But I would say there's a good chance we do not reach that status, obviously. Uh, but I think there's a very solid chance we do reach tropical storm status, given what we've seen from the models now, which is night and day from, from yesterday to today. That is insane to see that type of a development that quickly. For our confidence tab today, we've actually upgraded to a 5 out of 6 from a 4 out of 6. Uh, we feel confident that this storm is going to develop. We know exactly pretty much the direction this one's going to head. A uh, 92L, the one down there in the Gulf, uh, I'm feeling more confident in as well. We've seen those Chances increase in the probability of tropical depression and tropical storm as well. Uh, and the spaghetti models have hopped a little bit more on board with that Gulf Coast impact. So heading north is becoming more and more likely. That's all my reasons for being a 5 out of 6. For today's comment of the day, I asked you guys uh, which what status do you think the one in the Gulf will reach. And James Marr said, I believe it will become a tropical storm. Uh, and that does seem possible at this point. Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel. 
but especially our Platinum Patrons, John Ben Benick, James Wade, Dovey Nagel, Leo the Pan, and Donna Carnes, alongside our Diamond Patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Cat Byte, Charles Stinnett, Cindy Klein, Mark J, Luke Flago, Garys, John Colisi, Dwight Phelan, and Steven Cronenthal. If you would like to be a part of this patron end screen today, you could do so by joining our very exciting Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. I would also like to thank our channel members, Weather Top Dogs, Hair Farms 1, and Cat Bite as well. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to destroy the like button. Be sure to leave a comment down below that both, both of those things help the YouTube algorithm out a lot. And also be sure to subscribe if you like weather-related content. I will see you guys in the next video.